Deliberate Secret Sin One thing that many Christians are not getting right is true repentance. What they believe is that they just have to accept Jesus, and that is it. They are lacking the basic knowledge of repentance, and you will hear many Christians say that they have given their lives to Christ, but the sin in them remains. You used to lie before you accepted Jesus, but the lie grew more. You used to curse before you accepted Jesus, but now it is like you invented the prohibited language. You do things that should not be heard of, and you're tired of this. You want to stop, but you can't stop. This has been going on in the lives of many Christians, and they don't know what to do about it. The problem is lack of true or genuine repentance. It is one thing to accept Jesus. It is another thing to repent. Salvation is composed of these two things. Anyone can say they believe in Christ. Anyone can say they trust Jesus Christ, but still go ahead and do evil. Believing in Jesus is not enough. You need to repent genuinely because these two will perfect your salvation. The Bible says in Philippians 2 verse 12 that wherefore my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. True repentance will spark fear in you. The fear of going on to sin, the fear of the consequences of sin, the fear of God who is capable of destroying both the body and the soul. When these things come on you, it becomes hard to go back into that sin. You will genuinely repent of those sins. Matthew 10 verse 28 And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. James 2 verse 19 Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. James continues making his point that genuine saving faith in Christ results in doing good works. This includes loving other believers and obeying our Father. It is not enough to simply agree to certain facts about God. It is not enough to claim to be a believer. Saving living faith is a trust in God which naturally results in certain actions. It means living out the truth with our everyday choices. This verse is perhaps the strongest statement in Scripture on the difference between knowing about God and trusting in God. Knowledge is not the same as trust, or obedience, or saving faith. After all, James argues even demons believe that God is one, and they shudder in fear of Him. It is not enough to agree that the thing is true. Real faith in God personally responds to that truth with trust and obedience. James' point is that it's not enough to just agree. The demons are not saved because they do not exercise a saving kind of faith. This is James's very point, namely, not any kind of faith can save a person. That puts those who talk about God but fail to act in ways consistent with that belief in the same category as demons. It means knowing but not trusting. It means dead faith rather than saving faith. The danger of this condition is that a self-assured religious person can spend their entire lives in simple agreement without ever crossing over into true and living faith. The difference between saving faith and non-saving faith is that the former is only belief that God exists. The latter is faith in God. No one can be saved by believing that God exists and that Christ died for their sins and rose again. They must believe in Him, trust in Him and turning away from sin and following the path of Christ. What many of us do not know is that deliberate secret sins are evil in the eyes of the Lord. They are called iniquities and there are punishments for the secret sins. Many people will sin, they will do evil and then try to cover it up. It doesn't matter how long you cover this evil you have done secretly, it will be exposed someday. That is what the Bible says, Luke 8 verse 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. This is the truth you need to know now. No secret sin will remain secret forever. This is the time for you to let go of those secret sins. This is the time to run away from those secret sins. You need genuine repentance. There is one reason why you are still in sin. People do not just sin. They sin because of what they are seeing in the sin. What are they seeing in the sin? It is a pleasure, a promise of wealth, 
a promise of a good life, a promise of joy. If there is one thing sin knows how to do to people, it is giving people false hopes. Sin can promise you anything. It tells you that if you do this, you will have more money. It keeps promising you, and you see these promises and you become so attracted to them that you cannot do anything about it. But the truth is that all those promises are lies, because the Bible tells us the true cost of sin. Romans 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Are you ready to let go of the secret sins, or are you still enjoying the pleasure that comes with them? Do you still see yourself having money, doing evil? You need to repent, genuinely, now. If you are sinning deliberately, you are rejecting the gospel and you are rejecting the sacrifice of Christ. You indeed believe in Christ. It is true you know he came to die for you. The devil also believes in Christ. Some killers also believe in Christ. Many evil people believe in Christ. Believing in Christ doesn't make you different from others. What makes you different is accepting him and genuinely repenting and denouncing all secret sins. After you have denounced them, you must also renounce them and work out your salvation daily. James 2 verses 19 to 20 Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? What are the consequences of secret sins? 1. The plan will not prosper and you will be punished. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. The plan to conceal the sin so that no one will see it will not prosper is what the Bible is saying. There is no way you can cover your sins because there is nothing hidden in heaven on earth before the Lord. You must confess it and if you refuse, you will be punished. There are punishments for sin. Don't tempt God. You must run from these sins. God will only forgive you if you confess them. 2. It shifts you far away from God. When you think no one is seeing you and you continue to sin, what you are doing is that you are sinning yourself away from God. The relationship that you have with God will be affected. We know God cannot behold sin. He is too holy to do that and he can see what you are doing in secret. Don't let the presence of God go far away from you because you have allowed deliberate secret sin to take over your life. Isaiah 59 verse 1 Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. God wants to save you. He wants to help you out of the problems you find yourself in, but your iniquities, the deliberate sins, will make him not do that because you are sending him away from you. You need to stop the sinning and call him back to you. 3. You become an easy target for the devil. When you depart from God because of your secret sin, you are inviting the devil to come into your life. He will open your eyes to other sins and you will enter them. Sin will keep promising you good things and you will continue to listen to it. Sin is what gives the devil legal ground over your life. It is what exposes you to the devil because you are no longer in Christ. Don't let anyone deceive you into believing that when you are deliberately sinning, God is with you. Not that God is not going to try to get you, not that he will not want to save you, but because of that sin, you are pushing him away from you. You are going outside of Christ with that sin in your life. When you are outside of Christ, the devil will capture you. It is always safe in Christ. You need to remain in Christ. You need to let go of the secret sin. Let God see you as his child. Let him be able to draw near to you. How do we get out of these secret sins? I will be giving us practical steps to get out of these sins. Most of these sins are addictions. They are things we think we cannot do without, and it will make it too hard for us. In the case of addiction, it's good for you to talk to the person you trust. Let the people of God guide you through it. Submit yourself to guidance. Don't become too proud. Don't think they are buttering you. God wants to use them to help you. If you are facing addiction, you need to pray hard and seek the face of God. Then speak to people. 
What are the practical steps that all of us who find ourselves sinning secretly must take to get out of these sins? 1. Acknowledge the fact that you are sinning secretly, and it is bad. Don't lie to yourself. Don't think everything is good and going well. No, it is not. You need to know it is not good, and you are not only going with it because of the promises of sin, you cannot let them go. You need to accept the fact that you are sending God far away from you with that sin. Accept the fact that you are sinning and that you are causing great damage to your life. 1 John 1 verse 8 If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 2. Confess your sins and repent. The second thing is to actively confess your sin and renounce them all. Be certain about this. Don't deceive yourself. Let your heart hear you. Let your ears hear you. Renounce them loudly. Let the sin know that you are going away from it. Make up your mind that you are leaving it. Convince your mind and the spirit that you are done with the sin. To repent means to say that you are sorry for sinning and you don't want to do them anymore. Here what you need is genuine repentance. You need to be true to yourself. You need to make the whole of yourself know about this. Take your mind off the sin. See the negative side of it only. Repent and make the repentance genuine. God bless you.